patriots, they're truth seekers. This time I would like to review the book Beyond the Light Barrier by Elizabeth Clarer. Elizabeth Clarer was born in the year 1910 in Moy River Natal in South Africa, where she grew up on a farm and soon learned to understand the Zulu language very well. In Cambridge, England, she studied meteorology and later went on to Trinity College, London, where she graduated with a degree in music. She was also a trained pilot. During World War II, she was an employee of the South African Air Force in reconnaissance and during various operations, she also worked for the Royal Air Force, decoding German communications. She also learned to observe UFOs for the South African Air Force. She has a son, David, and a daughter, Marilyn, who is now a medical specialist, and another son, Eiling, an astrophysicist who lives on another planet. Yes, you heard it right. Elizabeth Clara gave birth to a son with a Nordic alien from Proxima Centauri. Her fascinating story began when she was seven years old. At that time, she received a visit from a flying saucer near the farm where she lived she then had telepathic communication several times with the crew member Akon, the spacecraft scientist. In November 1957, Elizabeth Clara boarded the spacecraft on the high plateau of Katkin Peak, Drakensberg, to meet her recovered lover, Akon. During the next eight and a half months, she was threatened especially by American intelligence and at one point was nearly kidnapped by the Russians who wanted to have access to the future space baby. Finally, she was taken by Akon to Proxima Centauri, another solar system, and her closest neighbor. There she stayed for four months on the planet Meton, where she gave birth to and raised her space baby, Eiling. Her heart could not adapt to the pressure of the magnetic field on Meton, and she was forced to return to Earth. Contact was maintained though, and Akon and her son became holographically visible to her. We will now read through a part of the book. Experiences beyond the light barrier are not only a milestone of contemporary history of the second half of the 20th century, there is also historically a crossroads for the final phase of the explosion-based propulsion of aviation and rocket technology. The future development of space will be by ether power. The author collected grandiose experiences, saw with her own eyes the flight practice of extraterrestrial scientists in harmony with nature and communication with the cosmos, foundations of a new physics. Beyond the Light Barrier by Elizabeth Clara, page 25. Prophecy about Elizabeth's future. Then he told me in his expressive language of the lore of his people, while I sat on the garden walls listening to him spellbound, for I understand the Zulu language. He explained the songs of his tribe in a manner more captivating and fascinating than any fairy tale, and I felt a sincere faith and ring of truth in his narrative, looking up with questioning eyes into the blue depths of the sky as he told me many strange and mysterious things. It once happened that a man and a woman came down from the heaven on a cloud and landed on a mountain. They were white and had golden hair. It is said that their village was illuminated by a light much stronger than any light in our world, and the people wore shining clothes and the huts were covered with shining grass. But they were lifted back up into the sky by a bright flash of lightning. They are beautiful to look at, wonderful and radiant. Their race has a lighter skin color, is taller, and the shape of their faces is differentiated. These sky dwellers will come back with the lightning bird who scale glitters in many colors. They are blue, golden or red and green, like a metallic rainbow skin. And when you will be a grown woman, you will go to the mountaintop and wait for the Celestials, and there will be a meeting, a unification. You belong to the Sky Dwellers. We know this because the Amphiti white woman told us. There, he said with a long breath, pointing upward with his old scarred finger. There on the mountaintop will come the lightning bird, whose blue and gold scales glitter in many colors like a rainbow, and he's coming for you, in Kostasana, little chief. So in the early years, Elizabeth had already contact with UFOs and Nordic extraterrestrials. Elizabeth already had made a contact with Akon before she met him. We will now read through the first meeting of Elizabeth and her star husband, Akon. Beyond the Light Barrier, page 52. First landing and confrontation at a distance. At this time, the spaceship came. I felt its nearness as a large white cumulus clouds, sharply silhouetted against the blue sky, drifted along in the east wind. These clouds served as a camouflage to test my patience and trust, but knowing the mystery in my soul. While staring at the sky, I saw a flash of light and then another edge of a cloud. Then, all of a sudden, the spaceship hovered under this cloud and then moved quickly and silently towards the top of the mountain, stopping again about 100 meters high side of the peak. It then slowly lost altitude and remained hovering about a meter above the ground. The autumn grass below was turned by a tremendous force and then flattened. A pulsating hum filled the air and the sudden displacement of air created by the ship pressed my eardrums outward. The circular ship was at least 20 meters in diameter, and the center protruded a dome with three large portholes, and behind one I could make out the outline of a human being. So I could see a man inside the ship who was also looking at me. He was standing with his arms folded. 
His eyes were compelling. They had an hypnotic pull, so to speak, that seemed to influence and control me even at a distance. I studied his face, the most beautiful I had ever seen, and a feeling of affection overwhelmed me. There a fine smile formed his ethereal features, a gentle smile that made my heart skip a beat, and I knew it had reached his eyes as well. But I dared not look into those eyes again, his power and influence pierced me completely, and I was aware that this would not be the only time. Elizabeth Clara develops an intimate love affair with Akon, the alien from Proxima Centauri. Elizabeth is taken to the planet Meton and Proxima Centauri stays there for four months, where she gives birth to a child. Unfortunately, she cannot stay longer because her heart is not used to the high vibrations of the planet Meton and has to return to Earth. Akon says Elizabeth is from Proxima Centauri and is here incarnated on Earth to tell the truth about the star people. I can only recommend everyone to buy and read this book by Elizabeth Clara. I'm firmly convinced that their story will one day be made into a movie. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to rate, subscribe and hit the bell button. And if you can make a small donation, the details are in the description. Many greetings from Saxony, Germany and... Cheers! Cheers.